Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new long distance walk series and this is the beginning of the Tass Valley Way which <laughs> long distance is a little bit of an overstatement it's only 40 kilometers long and it begins right here and this is Kringleford in fact right behind me is Kringleford Bridge and this is a scheduled ancient monument that dates to 1520 and here so it begins the Tass Valley Way I believe this is the River Tass I don't actually know because I haven't checked the map, but um, it would kind of make sense. And we're going to follow this river, not strictly on the river banks, but we're going to follow it to its source. And then there's a bit of an extension to the trail, which just ends at Attleborough. So we are just in the tiny hamlet of Intwood and this is the lovely church of All Saints that's grade 2 star listed and dates all the way back to the 12th century and it's got one of these rare round towers. I think there's only about 128, I'll actually pop it on the screen of how many there are in Norfolk so these are very very rare. Now just behind is Intwood Hall and the current building dates to about 1835 and grade two listed, but it was actually built on the site of a medieval manor house that once entertained Elizabeth I. And that current house was lived in by the Unthank family from the 19th century right through to 1990s. So we've just arrived in the village of Mulbarton 
and it's here that's a perfect place just to take a bit of a rest because there is a village pub called the world's end and it's just by the village pond and there is this lovely building this is the grade two star listed church of saint mary that dates to the medieval period and here we're actually going to cross the vast open green down through the village and there's actually a village shop just at the other end as well So we're just entering the village of Flawden, and over here, I can just make out Flawden Hall. I'll just make sure I don't slip here. That hall is a grade two star listed building that dates to 1595 and is actually an ancient farmhouse. And it's here that we're gonna take a footpath that leads us down in towards the village. So we've just taken a little detour off the trail to see this lovely historic church here. Now this is the church of St. Michael and it is grade two star listed and dates back to the 11th century. Now on this western edge there used to be a round tower and sadly there is nothing left to see there. And also sadly the church is locked so we can't go and have a look inside but this certainly is probably the oldest building we've seen so far on the trail and we've only got maybe a mile or so left until we get to Hapton and that is the end of this little first section of the Tass Valley Way.
we are just approaching Hapton, which is our final destination for the day. So if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and ring the bell to keep up to date with future uploads. And I'll see you in part two. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to part two of the Tass Valley Way where we started at the village of Hapton which is just over there and we're going to be finishing today at New Buckingham which is about 12 kilometres or so. Now I think for most of the journey we actually haven't seen the Tass as in the River Tass just yet but a lot of this section we're actually going to be following very close to the riverbank if not on the edge of the floodplain of the river itself which is going to be really nice and there's actually a little historic tree just coming up here just ahead you can see this is part of an old railway line that came off the Dister Norwich branch and then I think went across to probably Attleborough if not over towards Wyndham but um, I think on the map it actually shows there's a viaduct over there so I'm going to do my best to try and get a little view of it um, the last few days has been horrific for the entire country we had some big storms come across and there's a lot of flooding and um, we've actually experienced quite a bit of very wet terrain underfoot. But let's have a little look over here that you can see up onto the railway line up there. I'm just hoping there's going to be a footpath further up. Um, yeah, so I'm expecting some flooding today. I wouldn't be surprised if some parts might be impassable and have to take little detours round, but we shall see. It's going to be a glorious day. I think it's meant to be sunny all day. So this here is the River Tass and this is actually our first encounter with this river and we are going to be following it for several miles now down here and we might even have an opportunity to cross it if it's not flooded and check out a couple of historic churches further down but as you can see there is an awful lot of water in here I think this is probably a good meter or two higher than it would normally be and if I show you this side you can see how the river is just flooded straight up onto the fields alongside
that we're hugging the edge of the River Tass. This is like floodplain next to us here because it's so flat and then there's a little bit of a steep hill and we're kind of following a contour line like right along the edge. But on the other side of the river I can see the Church of St Mary. That is grade one listed and dates to the 13th century and there is a footpath and a bridge over there that leads to it but it's all a little bit too flooded for us. If you've seen some of the aerial shots, the, uh, you can just make out where the river should be meandering its way through the fields but back there we've we had to jump over flooded sections, take little detours around. It was quite horrible actually, it was a bit too wet. We've just passed Orchard House and I can just make out the Church of St Peter over there at Fawns at St Peter and that is a particularly old church, it's grade one listed and actually dates back to the 11th century and has a round Saxon tower which is very impressive and very rare. So we just crossed a rather complicated section of footpath where the way marking was absolutely awful. We were not sure if we were on the right path, but we managed to find the right way in the end. And we just noticed a little plaque for another long distance trail called something like Via Beta. Never heard of it, but it's a 400 mile long pilgrimagery that starts in Pembrokeshire and then ends on the East Coast. So this lovely farmhouse over here is Valley Farmhouse and it's a grade two listed building that dates back to the 17th century. And just beyond that is Gower Farmhouse, another grade two listed building. This one dating back to the 16th century. Both of them timber framed and absolutely beautiful historic buildings.
So we are just on the edge of the village of Hargate and although it's only a little ditch, this is the last time that we're going to be walking alongside anything that flows into the River Tass. The Tass actually goes just north of the village here, but this is like a little tributary and there isn't actually anywhere marked on the OS map that says that's the source of the River Tass. But if you look at the map, this dike here and another one just kind of flow together to form the River Tass. So this is a farewell to the river. We've been following it for seven and a half miles today. So um, yeah, it's not bad. I thought for a 42 kilometer route, we'll probably be following it a bit more. But when you look at the um, aerial shots, you can see we are in a tiny little valley. So I think the Tass Valley Way is quite an appropriate name. But we are probably two and a half or three kilometers away from the village of New Buckingham. So just in these trees, you can see here, this is Shrubbery Farm and it's a grade two listed building that's dated to circa 1700. And we've noticed the porch here, it's actually almost castellated on the top. It's really, really quite a nice house made up of lots of different sections that were all built at different times. So we are close to the village of New Buckingham now, roughly a kilometre or so ahead of this field walking, and we should be there. And it's a lovely village full of historic buildings, including a lovely church and castle, but more on that in part three. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and ring the bell to keep up to date with future uploads. And I will see you in part three. Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to part three of the Tass Valley Way where I'm here in the village of New Buckingham and it's going to be finishing in the town of Attleborough about seven and a half miles. Now this is the lovely grade one listed church of St Martin and it dates back to the 15th and 13th century but also has a lovely 16th century tower. Now in the village centre there is another lovely building this is the court or toll house and it's grade two star listed and originally built as shops and dated to 1559. Now there are numerous other incredible historic buildings including St Mary's Chapel, a grade one listed building and scheduled ancient monument that was built in the outer bailey of a castle in the 12th century. And of course next door is New Buckingham Castle. The castle is grade one listed and a scheduled ancient monument and built around 1140 with a round keep that's probably the earliest round keep in England.
So I'm just crossing these fields now into the village of Old Buckenham and it's named that because just across the field over there where that white house is, it's actually the site of Old Buckenham Castle and that was built just after the Norman Conquest. Now at some point the castle was abandoned and actually moved across to New Buckenham and that's why the village is called New Buckenham and on that site in 1146 there was an abbey that was founded and that's actually demolished and removed a lot of the castle features so today there's only a few earthworks and a small piece of curtain wall left. So this lovely church here is the Church of All Saints in Old Buckenham and it's grade one listed and dates all the way back to the 12th century but it was actually reconstructed in the 14th century and has an unusual sort of octagonal tower and here the path is going to go across uh, Old Buckenham Green and I'm going to check out the windmill just on the other side. Just up here is Old Buckingham Mill and it dates to 1818 and is grade two star listed. And it was actually the widest based mill in the entire country. And at the moment requires a bit of restoration. They were trying to raise money to replace the sails. This once had eight sails when it was first built and then after storm damage in the late 1800s, it was then replaced with a four sail system. But they're trying to I say, raise money to restore it right up to its former glory. We have joined this final road which is going to lead us into the centre of Attleborough which is roughly a mile or so up ahead and that marks the end of the 40 kilometre long Tass Valley Way. 
So if you enjoyed this video, just hit like and subscribe, ring the bell to keep up to date with future uploads, and I'll see you in the next video.